Hello, everybody. It is IMO, and today is the well, the final analyst work for the fee 4G because, well, it is the finals itself. <laughs> that is pretty simple, simple to explain. It it went so fast, honestly. Doing this work was actually very fun. Just talking was just very simple. It was, it wasn't necessarily uh, like necessary per se, but it was still fun to make, and I'm glad that people were still appreciate the, that I was able to do this. Will I do more in the future? <laughs> maybe not. I could consider maybe, but for now, I don't think I will anytime soon. But it has been a pleasure, <laughs> yeah, a pleasure to do this for you, folks of the P4G. But without further ado, there is a matchup to go over. One singular matchup that we have went over before back in week 5, which you can technically see that this is the slide from week 5. I just tried to run the finals over it. But for this finals, on the left side, he who has conquered the couple of Jack and Ali to reach into finals, Uzi Gunner, the coach of the Thunderclap Titans. And as on the other side, the, the player who has beaten both uh, Cal and the Seabad is Poki AMD himself of the LA Wakers. So, back in week 5, we were able to see the power of Petcharant behind screens as a threat that was able to absorb so many hits and able to just, to just dish out back so much damage. And uh, from what I remember, what I remember as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sources sources Intellion to bypass uh, soaking his high special uh, special bulk. But now it's a rematch, so obviously the same cards might not work again. So they might have to come up with new strategies. So on Uzi's side, as I mean, his best uh, his first round pick Okie Dogi. It is strong, but his speed tier is very not good here. Like, sure, getting the jump on Cloth and Flatpole is great. And also, uh, I mean, getting the jump on all of the speed tier that it gets to jump naturally is great, besides Quag's hair, because Quag is a bit too bulky. Book a bit annoyed by Toxic Chain. The rest can really just pummel Okie Dogi, depending on what side you're gonna look at it. Like, uh, if you think like Assault Vest to be able to take a hit from Inteleon, Noivern, or Ribambi, then you don't you lack the firepower to break through Petcharant. And if you try to, to to just hit as hard as possible, then you you're gonna be preyed uh, upon way more easily. And it's not like you can also just try a, a utility Okie Dogi either, because for some reason it doesn't get parting shot. Which could have been actually fire here. Like Reggie Steel sure blocks the move, but Reggie Steel doesn't want to come near Okie Dogi anyway. But nope, it doesn't learn parting shot, even though it looks like it could actually learn the move. <laughs> As for the ability, he, yeah, we can we can just stay with Toxic Chain. Guard Dog is only useful versus Incineroar, but it's not like Incineroar wants to switch into Okie Dogi anyway. So. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not going to be a, a team carry for this match. Slugging does feel like a little bit requ uh, needed because Joey has a lot of strong special attackers. Like, this is his best Pokemon to take hits from Inteleon. Also, Slugging can in fact hit hard. And also can stay healthy if played right with, with a Regenerator as well. So I would say, 
It's a, it's a, def it's definitely a better Pokemon in the matchup for sure. Like, like you just try, like you just like try a soft vest, but like maybe more like an offensive, uh, oriented Slowking, or maybe like just try be bulky but has some physical bulk to take uh, physical hits better from the likes of, well, if he tries to use uh, SD and Tillion again, maybe. As for Grim Snarl, where again. It's kind of like Okie Doki, where if you want to use it offensively, it's B tier, just doesn't do any favor. It's like it's even worse than Okie Doki. That being, uh, uh, well, uh, tied with Instant Aurora, but it could put some speed on it, but slower than Flapple and Cloth. But at least it could support. Like, dual screen can be nice to help you set up yourself, though you have to be, of course, be wary of. Joey prepping for dual screen Grimstall from his side. Or beside that, I guess you could also try like a special Grimstall. It does have a base 95 special attack to fire off Dark Pulse and Dazzling Gleam from it. As for Kilowatt Roll, it does. It's pretty hard. It has a jump on all but Reggie Lucky on Joey's team. And well, yeah, he won't be able to just KO everything immediately, but it could definitely be a late game win con, depending like if Regilaki is dealt with like more easily, or if there's like not a terrible choice card for it to face off against. Definitely one of the like Soul King one of the better Pokemon here for sure. The Don Sparse on his side, it's. It seems pretty decent. Like you could try to have it like cover cloth to take a to take malignant from a Petron better without getting poison. Or you could try to just spare uh, spam paralysis with glare, and maybe have like serene grace headbutt and bite. Like sure you have to take a lot of hit to just kill something, but at least you have the chance to get as many hits as possible. Or at least just spreading paralysis is useful. Because you know paralysis is broken, like in, in general. Delphox is it is a strong special attacker, but it's but again it's, it has to jump on a lot, but it also gets outspeed by a lot as well. And the mo the moment it takes a hit, it won't be able to take another. Plus, if it wants to hit Incineroar, it has to be either using Focus Blast, which can miss, or Scorching Sand, who is weak. But maybe with some kind of blunder policy or agility set, maybe we could see Delphox sweep instead. So that way he can get the jump on everything. But that seems uh, very that seems very hard to use as a Delphox. Then the Sejuai seems also like a little bit weak here. Sure, Ghost Move can be strong, and it has Low Kick to hit Incineroar with. But again, it's just not helped by by its speed tier here, and even then, it's not that strong. Like, like it's it's not weak, but it's not strong enough to just K like to kill or even like to kill some stuff as well. Like it can get it can get dealt easily with how offensive Joy's team can be. Then the Sentaconda. Which I feel like could be could be a uh, a brain here. It could be used to be annoying with a special and Reggie Alecki. Piling on some glare with potentially the Dunsparce. You could get rocks for it. Also, funnily enough, it learns Hurricane. I don't think he wants to use it, but uh, it, it, Joey has Aircross, which is four times weak to, which otherwise would be, well, not okay because I don't think he wants to get paralyzed, but. If you try to switch our cross in or something, I mean, you have glare, it's just glare. I just thought it would be funny to mention Hurricane on Sinaconda. As for Alolan Sand Slash, that will never sweep, like ever. It's even with Slow King, uh, Chili Reception, it's not fast enough for most of, of Joy's stuff, especially with Jelaki. It can be walled rather easily, even with Source Dance. Also, it gets hit very hard with how Joey's team is very uh, oriented on the special side as well. Though I don't think 
like utility wise it could be decent like sending up some spikes while having the Sejuai to block spin from Reggie Lucky. I could see that also yeah it has moves like uh, Super Fang, Knock Off and even like you know like the counter moves like Counter, Mirror Coat or even Middle Burst depending like that could surprise special attacker if not uh, uh, expecting it as for dash bond it's 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 too weak it, it I don't think if, unless you want to have some some kind of yawn forcing switches dash bond will just not cut it like even if you try like very offensive with Terra dark as a way to kind of be a grim snarl but it trading a lot of power for more speed and physical bulk it, but even then, it, it just doesn't break Pecha around. It just gets bullied by Pecha. So I don't think you're gonna see it. Hunter can be very strong. Like it can be Terra Ghost or Terra Fighting, depending on what it wants. Like either stronger Shadow Balls or like Terra Fighting to just break through in Snare more, uh, more easily with either Terra Blast Fighting or Focus Blast. It is definitely a strong special attacker here. So like, like it can be also a solid score, choice scarf because it has levitate, so it doesn't have to worry about uh, Rubombi's uh, potential sticky web if Joey wants to bring it, and that Uzi can remove the web because uh, Sand Slash won't be able to spin into Petrot. So if I were Uzi and I would have to choose a six, I would definitely bring Slucking and Kilowatt Troll. I would consider Hunter as well. Then I would uh, probably run like also send a Kanda so that way we're we're not uh, tasking uh, Kilowatt Troll for the Reggie Lucky. So that's already four. I think next I will just settle on some kind of the Dunce Parse as well. It looks pretty neut, at least decent enough to be neutral into a one v one. And then last, I'm taking either one of Okidogi or Decidueye because even the Decidueye's Child Sneak could be useful if he gets enough damage. I think I'll go Decidueye. Yeah, maybe benching your, your tier 1 is rough, but I don't think Okidogi is that great anyway. Yeah, so it's got. So the team for my prediction would be Slow King, Kilowatt Troll, The Dance Bars, Decidueye. Sendaconda and Hunter with a strategy of going uh, Glare Spam with the Dunce Parse and Sendaconda. I then try to do big damage with Hunter, uh, Decidueye, and Kilowatt Roll and have Sloking as a decent pivot. Alright, so that was for Uzi's side. Now, if I was jo Joey with his, uh, all of his Pokemon, Heracross. It's pretty strong. Uzi's flying type kilowatt troll is rather frail, so he won't appreciate taking even stab moves. And same goes for Hunter, unless the move is is close combat on on a ghost type Hunter. So its speed tier is pretty nice as well. It's just uh, slower than Hunter and above, but I think it's fine. Better Hunter is a must. The might be. If not the best Pokemon in the matchup, period. It uh, deals with so many stuff on Uzi's team by itself. And also its stab is just so, so strong. Like, the only Pokemon you really have to be uh, aware of against are the Dunsparce and Sinaconda, which because they are tanky enough and can take at least one stab. And could we prep for the other if uh, prep uh, correctly, but still, it's the best Pokemon of Joey's team for the matchup. Without that, we saw what happened week five. We could maybe see something similar happen again. After all, uh, if it works very, very well, is you're not necessarily having to switch it. You could run weak sense policy again. You could. As for Noivern, it is fast. It. Uh, when I read Snowyvern, I guess it's like uh, Heracross where the flying resist is too frail to take, to take flying moves on, but do you really want to risk Hurricane Finals 
You could use Aero Slash, but then you're gonna need some flint chance to compensate for the lack of power, especially because it comes from Noivern's uh, little underwhelmed base 97 special attack. Not terrible, but maybe not the most optimal uh, choice here, potentially. Incineroar is pretty, is pretty neat. Like with, you have a Pecheron to fall back on Okie Dogi. It's still, it can still take a hit from Delphox as long as you don't like hit a Focus Blast in the face on the switch. Also, you can uh, parting shot around the team. You can spread some knockout that can be annoying to switch into. So yeah, also Intimidate pretty useful for like. Sand slash, but you can also run like no intimidate if you fear like a potential double switch on Okie Dogi when trying to switch in Incineroar or like accidentally at triggering an adrenaline orb after. Rebombi is actually a threat. The steel type is a lowland sand slash, which if, you, if it's invested, sure, it could take a uh, moonblast well, but it's still a threat nonetheless. Like, its moonblasts are strong. It has Psychic for Okie Dogi. It has Bug Buzz for Slow King. Yeah, it's it's just a, a solid Pokemon that can do some big damage, and is well, it's the is very fast. It's just slower than Kilowattroll only, but by the time we'll just be able to hit too hard. Inteleon is a menace. The Water Resist are both weak to Dark on Uzi's team, so Inteleon having just a stab. One of a uh, Surf Ore and uh, Hydro Pump, and then just Dark Pulse for last, or even U Turn, makes it a big threat versus Uzi, like without a doubt. Again, very fast, only outspied by a Kilowatt Roll, but very strong nonetheless. Reggie Steel, it will be a, well, what a Reggie Steel does best. Being a bulky Steel type, it can set up Stealth Rock. I guess it could be annoying to run Reggie still when when there's a Santa Conda in the matchup. Like Reggie still doesn't really hurt it unless he goes for an Iron Defense Body Press, which I could see as a set after all, which makes it very uh, way more difficult for Okie Dogi to break it. Plus, it could still take a hit from a from Delphox, assuming it's not like Choice Packs, but we have Incineroar anyway in the back if you need some uh, resources versus Delphox. Plus, you could potentially be Thunder Wave if you know Kilowatt Roll will not switch onto you to absorb it. And like, you ruin something, or I guess, or either send a Kanja. Which, like, we, we did saw what he was able to do with it. Despite the amount of ground type we had to go up against, we saw the use of Reggie Lucky getting those fast screens, forcing the ground type in. Exploding on them, bringing a Pokemon that can then punish the ground type for coming in, like either Inteleon or Flapple. So at this point, we, we have to be ready to see Reggie Lucky because again, that's also another way uh, uh, Joey could fight screens with his own screens. Quag, it could run Quag, but I feel like it's very specific. Like it's just specific versus Sand Slash and Okie Dogi, in my opinion. Which I guess it could also be nice to set up some hazards with it. But I feel like you could have something else instead. Alright, now the Terra Captains. Flapple. Maybe not a good speed, but it's still very strong in my opinion, without a doubt. Because Sand Slash is either A, not that good, or B, could be worn down by Rebumbi, you, you're not necessarily forced to be Terra Fire with Terra Blast. You could be like. Terra Dragon, since again, Uzi's fairy type is not good either, so you, so that you could potentially get, get away with Terra Dragon Flapple, offensively. Like Dragon Dance, or it would be actually it would be fire to see Choice Scarf Flapple. <laughs> Choice Scarf Outrage, or even, maybe even Special with Draco Meteor, because again, it has, it has base 95, so it could be used on the special side if wanted to. And then, last, Cloth, which I think it's also solid. Like, if Seneconda is in Okie Dogi or Chip, okay, uh, Cloth could go on the, mass on the Massacre. It's, it's very strong. 
but I feel like he wanna have one of Fluffle or Cloth. So with all this in mind, if I was Joey, I would run for sure Pecharont, absolutely, the best Pokemon of the team. I would also like to run the Rabombi. I would like to run the Inthelion as well. Then I would run Regieliki as well. I like the fast screen into boom, mo easy momentum, and because we're going boom, I f I'm thinking of Flapple, really. Because of Sand Slash and Dash are not that good, Terra Dragon can just go absolutely insane. I guess there's Grim Snarl as a fairy, actually, but that's just one Pokemon. Besides, it has low defense, can hit hard by Grapple anyway, even if it tries to set up a Reflect because Grapple dropping defense. And then last, I'll probably just put Incineroar as another bulky pivot. Like, you could ask uh, Pesharon to absorb physical hit and uh, pivot out, and then Incineroar for special hits and pivot out. So, yeah, so Pesharon, Incineroar, Rubambi, Inteleon, Regielaki, Flapple will be the team that I will see the, in the six I will see the most coming from Joey. And if I were to say who has the upper hand, no favoritism, of course, but I feel like Joey's team like in week, back in week 5 is just way better versus Uzi's. Of course, that doesn't mean that he is guaranteed to win. Of course. And anything can happen, it's Pokemon, and maybe Uzi will discover something that will be able to just top, topple off Joey. Who knows? But I'm still gonna give it in his favor, but I have no doubt in my mind that this will be a great final to close up this season of the P4G. But yeah, that's it. This was the very last matchup to go over for me. So again, I'm gonna thank the thanks the P4G for let me well. I guess you could say yeah, partner up with them in a way. Just something very very fun to do. To you know, just see uh, the matchup from a, from another player's perspective and everything. And I, <laughs> I don't really have much more to say. Pretty much, like, say my, I said my thanks. I don't think I will do uh, this in any time soon. But, yeah, that was it. So, I appreciate you guys for listening to me just talking about this matchup from my perspective and on that I hope we will see a great finals from our last players so I will just sign off on this part this has been a pleasure this is Amol uh, telling you goodbye for more draft league content stuff <laughs> see everybody have a nice day, night, or whatever time of day you are. Bye-bye.